we are eager to be reopening the Salem Public Library on October 1st. We heard you, your anxiousness to get into the library and, and see the beautifully renovated, remodeled building, to be able to check out books, to get at the tremendous resources that are available at the library. We'll be doing so in a safe way, following the protocols from the Oregon Health Authority. Our main library was made possible by the voters who voted for the bond, by the foundation, by the friends of the Salem Public Library, uh, by the council subcommittee that helped us with making big decisions, the progressive design build group that included the um, general contractor and architects. You know, there just were so many people who were so critical, including all of the library staff and all of the library supporters and all of the patrons of the Salem Public Library, all of you were critical in making this building, this beautiful revitalized library space possible. Thank you all so, so much. Exterior features include a beautiful daylight entry plaza paid for with the help of the Salem Library Foundation. a new parking kiosk replacing meters, a reinforced parkade with access on Liberty Street and exit only on Leslie Street, and a new feature starting this year, three hours of free parking one time each day, and a new book drop off Liberty Street between the library and City Hall. Really this, this uh, bond project was uh, about creating a safe and more accessible uh, library for the public. And so um, from the very beginning we looked at the seismic stability of the structure and realizing that it's a, a building that was built in 1972. It had some, so some flaws and, and codes have changed over the years. And so we actually constructed five shear walls uh, around the exterior of, of the building and a couple in, in interior shear walls that are going to stabilize it in the event of an earthquake. Some of the things we decided to do with those shear walls, because um, you know they're big concrete walls, is actually to make them a decorative element. So you will see that uh, it's got a nice uh, dark background to make the green living wall that will eventually be there as the star jasmine and the clematis grow up the trellis. You can also see the trellis. Uh, we are so excited to have that beautiful, uh, the beautiful living wall. And it's been one of the concepts that started early on in this project and we've managed to carry it through and make it a reality. Because the building was built in 72, a lot of the a lot of the access and the walkways were um, no longer in compliance with, with, with uh, current code. Improvements include accessible, family and gender neutral restrooms, wider sidewalks, automatic doors, a ramp to the stage at Laux Auditorium as well as improved wheelchair seating, and hearing assist devices in all of our meeting rooms. We've also moved holds and large print books close to the entrance for easier access. Our friends group supports us by taking donations and by taking books that we can no longer use in the life cycle of the library and turning them into new books for us. Also near the entrance is the automated materials handling system where you can drop return books through a slot and they will be automatically sorted and removed from your account. The system means less staff time preparing books for shelves and more time to spend with patrons. Right here we have our one of our self-checkout stations. You will find these throughout the library to make checking out and taking your items home with you as easy as possible. Near the elevator, you'll find one of the newly refreshed gateways created years ago by artist Kirsten Koontz. We have changed around on the main floor, the first floor now, the fiction and nonfiction collections for the adult materials. So you will find all of your fiction collections over by the windows on the west side of the building, movies and DVDs and things like that in the middle. And on the east side of the building, you will find our nonfiction collections all the way through to the back. You'll be able to see the library's public art collection in new ways because the Salem Library Foundation and Salem Arts Commission worked together to curate the collection. 
One of the things we heard a lot about in the outreach for the project is that people wanted to see more lighting throughout the space because they felt like there were parts where they couldn't even find the books they were looking for because it was so dark. So lighting was one of the things that we made sure to add and we even reused some of the lighting from the reading room in the children's area. The concept for the library's redesign took its inspiration from the many trees on the site. Each floor and its color scheme represented a portion of the tree. From the brown roots of the plaza level, where most staff offices are located, to the green understory of the first floor, where adult collections are centered, to the blue canopy of the second floor, where youth activities are focused. Teens, children's, and tiny tot areas are now located together on the second floor, a request from the public for family convenience. And familiar items have been repurposed, like the fairy tale art glass that can be better viewed against the backdrop of the trees outside. The reading room in the, that had been in the middle of what is now the first floor was a catalyst for this whole project. I think it led us to see what the future of Salem Public Library could be um, and how comfortable and how much it could bring all of the members of the community together in this conversation space. These glass elements uh, in the collaboration studio that's on the plaza level and the um, backsplash here, those both came from the reading room and we really wanted to make sure that we were honoring the contribution of Paul Gaylor um, for that reading room space and the change that I think it really helped bring about at Salem Public Library.